All right, y'all. So today we're going to be talking about indigenous black Europeans. And the first book we're going to be reading, this book is called True Myth, Black Vikings of the Middle Ages by Nasheed Amin. It says the language or languages spoken in continental Europe and Britain during this early period is beyond the scope of this work. However, Massey asserts that ancient Egyptian was spoken all over the continent and there is the possibility that incoming Asians were familiar with it or spoke a dialect of it in their own areas of origin. You see that? So they're saying that an Egyptian language was spoken in Europe and Britain in ancient times and that the Asians spoke a dialect of it as well. And if you know anything about the continents, Asia and Europe was right by each other. In fact, many people say that Europe is in Asia, that they just separated it to call it Europe. It says Hebrew, an offshoot or dialect of ancient Egyptian, was widely dispersed in Asia. So many root words were the same or similar enough to be understood by speakers of either tongue 4,000 years ago. And root words and dialects of either language would also have facilitated understanding. People could acquire another language by taking the time to learn it or pick it up from living in proximity to people who spoke it. Whatever the case in Northern Europe, a world where mining, metalworking, agriculture, trade, common religious worship, seafaring, and commerce existed among Afro-Asiatic people at the top of the world, it seems that many black and dark-skinned folk shared a racial affinity which prompts Mac Ritchie to state confidently, thus, the Moors or Saracens, the Danes and other kindred races and the Gypsies are virtually the same people under different names. You see that? He said they are the same. The Moors, Saracens, Danes, and Gypsies are all the same people under different names. And many people say they are Moors. Some people say they are Israelites that became Moors. And some people say they are the Aboriginal people of Europe. But they are all the same people under different names. All right? Now, this book is called The Humanity Archive, Recovering the Soul of Black History by Jermaine Fowler. It says, there was a likely reason the lives of Africans in Spanish colonies were so fluid. Remember earlier, we discussed the significant African presence in Spain and Portugal. These were Moors because remember, the Moors ruled Europe for a thousand years under the Dark Ages. In fact, black people ruled all over the world during the time of the Dark Ages. It says for 700 years from 711 to 1492 CE, they invaded and occupied most of Spain and Portugal. Education, arts, and sciences flourished there. So why are they saying education, arts, and science? Because the Moors brought it to Europe. That's how Europe became educated in that part of Europe where the Moors were because they were pouring all the knowledge into that part of Europe. It says black Moors operated at all levels of society. Again, here we see how whitewashing works. The word more does not represent an ethnicity, but was used by Europeans to describe Muslims living in Europe. You see that? They said more does not represent an ethnicity. It's not a race of people. More is just a title. All right. And it says the Latin term Morris means dark skin. But indeed, many North Africans described as Moors were light skinned just darker than the typical European. The important thing to know, though, is that there were black Moors, many of whom, enslaved or free, began their lives in America as literate professionals interacting in North African and Spanish societies. You see that? These Moors were always in Europe, and they were ruling Europe, and they pulled the knowledge into Europe. And I've read several sources that say they were aboriginals to Europe. All right. And there's some sources that even say the first people in Europe were black people. And I'll bring that out, too. These people were already there. And, and even when you talk about Christopher Columbus, that's why a lot of our people, like I said, a lot of people get mad when the indigenous people go at the Moors and the people have a problem with the Moors because they feel as though the Moors came with the Europeans and helped them enslave the, the, the colonies. They helped take over here in the Americas. So you can't, I mean, you got to respect if a person feels some type of way about the Moors or black Europeans coming over here or trying to blend in with the society. They're going to have a problem because those people helped conquer the land. Now we're going to be reading in this next book. It's called America's Black Founders, Revolutionary Heroes and Early Leaders by Nancy Sanders. 
It says long before colonists established the first permanent settlement in the English colonies, Africans were members of the earliest exploring parties brave enough to sail across the Atlantic Ocean. It says Africans were some of the first people to come across the Atlantic Ocean that was brave enough. Why did it say brave enough? Because they knew it was very violent to come from Africa to the Americas, especially going across the Atlantic Ocean. They knew that. So that's why when we talk about the slave trade and how many people they claim they brought to the Americas, it's, it's, it's kind of it's very questionable because you can't tell me you brought millions of people when it's talking about these people were brave enough. They knew they heard the stories. Many people died. Many people went overboard. They heard the stories. They knew. But here we go again. These Africans, where do you think these Africans came from? They came from Europe. Watch this. It says Africans journeyed with Europeans to the Americas as conquistadors, mariners, explorers, settlers, and slaves. You see that? It says Pedro Alonso Nino sailed with Christopher Columbus as navigator in 1492. Conquistador Juan Jarrito fought with Hernan Cortez against the Aztecs to conquer what is now known as Mexico City. So you got these black Europeans helping Christopher Columbus and Hernando Cortez and all these people conquer the Americas. And that's why a lot of people in the indigenous community have a problem with the Moors and the black Europeans. They have a problem with them because they know the history and you, you got to respect that. All right. Now watch this. It says Juan Valiente was a black conquistador of Chile. You see that a black conquistador. Juan Garcia and Miguel Ruiz were black conquistadors of Peru. Nuflo de Olano was a part of Balboa's exploring party in 1513 when they first saw the Pacific Ocean. It says Estabanico's brave adventures led him to explore Florida. Later, he guided an overland expedition through New Mexico on his quest to find the famous seven cities of gold. You see that? The famous seven cities of gold. And this is located in Arizona. So how did an Estabanico, he was a Moor too. He was a Moor. It says Estabanico's brave adventures led him to explore. How did he know about Florida? How did he even know about the seven cities of gold? That means somebody told them beforehand. Somebody had already been over here and knew about it and told them about it. That's how they even knew it existed. So these black Europeans been knowing about the Americas for a long time now. But watch this. Now, this book is called Discovering Black America from the Age of Exploration to the 21st Century by Linda Reed. It says the earliest blacks to arrive in North America were not shackled Africans who were forced to migrate from Africa to the New World during the journey called the Middle Passage in the 17th and 18th centuries. Some of the first Africans or people of African descent to step foot on the American continent were navigators, translators, and other seamen who worked aboard European ships during the age of exploration in the 15th century. You already know just because these people are dark skinned are already going to attribute these people to Africa. Even if they wasn't African, they still had that title put up on them. It says some who sailed were free while others were enslaved. Historians have documented that on Christopher Columbus's first voyage to the New World in 1492, Pedro Alonso Nino, a black man of Spanish descent, was the pilot or the navigator of the Nina, one of the three ships Columbus outfitted for his voyage to the New World. You see that? They said Pedro Alonso Nino was a black man of Spanish descent, so he was from Spain, a black European. It says Juan Garrido, a free black explorer, was a member of Ponce de Leon's expeditions to Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. Garrido also joined Hernan Cortes in the fight to conquer Mexico and in the 16th century engraving Garrido, far left, and Cortes meet with Mexican officials. You see that? So these, poor, these, so these black Europeans, again, are conquering the Americas. It says Canary Islands reportedly accompanied Columbus on the Santa Maria, although some historical accounts place Pedro Alonso Nino on the Santa Maria. It says Esteban Gomez sailed under a Spanish flag into the Narrows claimed by Giovanni de Verrazzano in 1525, becoming the first known person of African descent to explore the lower Hudson River around what is now New York City. So here we go again with the black Europeans coming to the Americas. It says Juan Garrido, a free black explorer also of African descent, 
traveled with Juan Ponce de Leon's expedition to Puerto Rico, Florida, and the Caribbean between 1508 and 1519, and with Hernan Cortez's expedition to Mexico in 1521 and Estabanico, an enslaved black moor, accompanied Andres Durantes de Carranza and Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca on explorations of Florida, Texas, and the Gulf of Mexico, and across the southwest to the site of Mexico City in 1528 with the Panfilo de Narvaez expedition, more than 275 years before Lewis and Clark's expedition crossed the United States. Estabanico, Black Stephen and Esteban the Moor are just some of the names the infamous Black Conquistador is known by in historical accounts. You see that? They called him a Black Conquistador. It says, born in Azamor, Morocco around 1503, Estabanico was enslaved after the Portuguese attacked his village in 1513. He was purchased by Andres Durantes Carranza, the Spanish aristocrat and explorer who was part of the Panfilo de Narvaez expedition. Estabanico traveled ahead of the main expedition, sending Native American messengers back to Fray Niza, informing him that the journey was going well. When Estabanico arrived at Azuni Pueblo, a settlement of Native Americans in present-day New Mexico in the town of Hawiku, the first of the seven cities of gold, he was met with distrust and barred from entering the settlement by the Zuni chiefs. Because this black European, if you listen earlier, he was coming to the seven cities of gold so he can rob the resources. All right, that's what he was coming for. That's what all the black Europeans was coming to the Americas for, even with Columbus. They was all coming to try to rob the Americas. They was coming to try to rob all the resources, all the stones, all the metals, everything that was here. He knew about those seven cities of gold. So that means somebody told him before. It says Estabanico had sent messengers ahead of the entourage to present the chiefs with this copper rattle and sacred gourds, which were adorned with feathers. The chiefs were offended by the offering and believe it signified evil or death and refused entry to Estabanico and his group. Estabanico was held captive by the Zunis and was killed while trying to escape. You see that? So when he came, they felt something wasn't right. And it wasn't because he was coming there to rob the resources. Now, this book is called Black British History, New Perspectives by Hakim Adi. It says recent analysis of human remains from the Roman era also suggests that not only those of North African origin found their way to Britain, but also others from sub-Saharan Africa, such as Beachy Head Lady. Beachy Head Lady was so named because her skeletal remains were first discovered near Eastbourne in southern England. The remains are thought to date from the mid-3rd century CE in the middle of the Roman period and are of a young woman. Although she is thought to have grown up in the area, analysis of her remains suggests that she was of African origin. She was evidently from a part of Africa that was not included in the Roman Empire, and she was probably either born in Sussex or brought to Britain at a very young age. Such evidence poses fascinating questions about the past, about the possibility of families of Africans living in Britain in ancient times. Make sure y'all stay tuned, y'all. We're going to do part two.